Good morning. Thank you for joining us for another review of the headlines in our newspaper. Now, we call this program off the press. My name is Felicity Ezewiki. I'm joined by two gentlemen. Both public affairs analysts, we start with Bolaha Olojede. Pleasure to have you join us. Good to be here. And of course, we have Dr. Femi Ido Adegoke. Good Thank morning. you for coming. Good, Good morning. morning. All right, we'll start with the nation newspaper. Uh, the big one here is Boko Haram hits Chibok as fighter jets pound Iswab. Many killed, houses raised, Buhari promises freedom for Lear on um, second anniversary. Nigeria's inflation highest in 22 months. State House director killed. That was a breaking story, a sad one. Uh, yesterday. And at the top, uh, just above the masthead, you're looking at uh, the three stories. The first one is three doctors arraigned over baby's debt. We're not guilty, they're saying. Uh, visa restriction on Nigerians temporary, says US. Coronavirus puts Nigeria at economic risk. That's WHO raises alarm. Still on the front page, we have ready to go economic and financial crimes commission operatives during their passing hour parade on completion of the detective inspectors course five in Kaduna. And uh, just minute that photograph of jubilant um, officers that you see were winning war on corruption, says uh, Buhari. On the side, on the left hand side, FIRS orders deduction of stamp duty. CIT others from source, power devolution, land use, threaten constitution, review, and on the back page, we have something um, that's uh, focused on insecurity and the service chiefs. That conversation seems to be unending. Gentlemen, let's start with the front of Bono. I'll start with you, Bola. Um, hits Chibok again. Quite unfortunate, but we are probably going to have more of this. As the federal government decide to go all out on these people, they will also go all out on us. That is because it is important for them to establish their relevance and to continue to do that. In the course of doing that, more vulnerable peoples and communities will continue Don't to be Don't we have attacked. more might? Don't we have more military might? We are a country. They're just a group. Can't we use that military might if it is and military dismantle might, these people once and for all? I don't think we have enough soldiers. That is, to be honest. But if they are focused, which I think is what our government is trying to do now, let's pursue this to the very end and make sure we clean all vestiges of these people out of place. Otherwise, for as long as they still have the capacity, forget about the fact that they don't come to Abuja anymore. For as long as they still have the capacity to attack little communities and burn everything down and, and create problems, then the war cannot be said to be over. Let me come to you, uh, Doctor. Well, Winning the war on corruption, that's another aspect um, of the paper this morning. I'd like to take your thoughts on that. Yeah, that's what the federal government is telling us, that they're winning the war on corruption. Yeah, we've had so many uh, stories or arrests or indictment. Is that but, comment still relevant in the face of, let's say, the insurgency yeah, that in seems to be yeah, intensifying? In, yeah, that's where I'm going. Insurgency is actually undermining the way in uh, corruption that the federal government is saying. Because in some quarters, it's believed that this uh, insurgency is a way for some people to make uh, mm -hmm. money. They are actually benefiting from the ongoing uh, Boko Haram. And Someone is actually benefiting some from people. the debt of innocent people? Yes. Is that what you say? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. There, there, are, there are people benefiting from it um, because there's a lot of money exchanging hands. So that's why when you say you're winning... In Can't we find this people? Is there no intelligence? I mean, what are we really doing when we talk yeah, that's about where, that's intelligence? Where, that's, that's, that's what we've been talking about, about, about use your strategy. The present strategy that the federal government has engaged for a very long time seems to have not worked. And now, yes, they, they're going all out now. We'll see the result of that. And that has led to the clamor for the change of the service chiefs as well. But the question now is, uh, like he said, these insurgents... They are devising strategy on a daily basis because they want to have relevance. I've read somewhere that they, have not, they are not in three groups. They're not just one faction anymore. They are in three groups. So if you're facing this, this is attack. So they are, they, they, they are working together as well. 
Why is it's, it's, it's worse that they live among the people. It's yeah. a different story when you just have a body of uh, militia that you want to go and attack. But yeah. we're even within the, the community. Yeah. Some of members of the community are also members of the same group that we're talking about. It's fairly complex. Is there a possibility that this, this um, Boko Haram insurgency will be dismantled in the real sense of the word? Because it seems that they are defying every strategic security move that this government is putting in place. Have we done all that we can do? Okay, yeah. Is that not still part of why we <laughs> said change the chiefs? Yes. If that will help, will there be new people that will come with new ideas? Change more important than changing individuals. Do we need to change the architect, the entire strategy and architecture of security to approach it in a different way? Don't lose your thoughts. You yes. wanted to say something. I read an article that said even over a thousand ex Boko Haram members were released in the open. They just let them go without anything to do. They may, they are going to want to feed and all that. Yes, or the whole one thousand might not go back. But if they become high do and they don't have anything to do and life becomes unbearable again, you find them back there. So, like he said, we, have we done all we're supposed to do? Well, big question. I have no answer that's, that's for. Um, there's this story here that I saw repeated in the pot, and so I'll just uh, yeah. take it and just ask you straight up. Assailants kill Asirov director set body on fire. Well, how your reaction to that? Quite unfortunate. But you see... Um most of the attacks, banditry, Boko Haram, when you look at the environment where most of this happens, it's in some, among the poor of the poor, you see the touch huts that were burnt and the people, poor people. No, but this, this, um, this Asarok director can't be living in that kind of That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it, 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 it shows that the vulnerability of the people that hitherto we would have thought they're not even vulnerable mm. to this. So it, 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 it's beginning to get to, 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 to those levels. And that is the more reason why it's not just about ending insurgency. It's not about saying there are no flags on an occupied land in Nigeria. It's that, the, that everybody must feel safe to pursue their happiness in this land. For as long as that is not the case, then the war is not over. All right, still on the punch newspaper this morning, the big one here is Esparts asked government to boost agri as inflation hits 21-month high. We have two riders to that story. Inflation rises from 11.98% in December to 12.13% in January. Blame insecurity about the closure of finance at Malafia. Um, the coronavirus, I think, is um, uh, it's captured on the front page of foreign airline passengers at the newly installed um, machine for coronavirus screening at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja. That seems to be a good one uh, for us. It shows, um, unlike when we had the situation with Ebola um, that was able to infiltrate. Because so, uh, Do you think that yeah, this is a measure that will really um, help? Let me come to you, uh, Dr. Femi. Yeah, I think um, by the, from the Minister for State for Health, um, Senator Mamura said yesterday at Ifura that they're putting things in place at the, all the ports across the country, uh, and that's one of them at the NWA Zikwe. That or even if you're perceived to be sick, you're supposed to go in for a test. You don't have to have said you uh, you don't have to be uh, coronavirus or anything. You have to go in for tests, and then if you have coronavirus, they're already having quarantine centers. It's good for the for us because it's like a, this is a proactive measure. We're not waiting for it to get in before we now start running Elter Skelter. Let's see some other headlines. Uh, continued border closure, not sustainable, says man. And you have that repeated underneath the big screamer, uh, where you have Malafia saying, blame insecurity, border closure, finance act for, uh, you know, the inflation rising from 11.98% uh, to 12.13% in January. That's between a space of uh, just one month. Uh, yeah. That seems well, to be a it, it, more it, tough. It, it could get worse. Um, that, that's the reality. Border closure should always be a temporary measure. But we have closed our border since August. By now, I can assure you that most of the things we are stopping by doing that, we're not stopping them. 
because mm -hmm. people will have found a way around Indeed. those things. Mm -hmm. We also have a situation of how many borders or how many entries into the country did we actually close? We closed the formal entries. What about the informal ones that are said to be? Probably over a thousand of them. Yeah. So we need to look at these things critically, revisit the issues, and deal with it as appropriate. It is not sustainable. Okay, uh, let me just quickly mention, so our um, Supreme Court adjourned Imo Zamfara poll judgment review suit. So page uh, 41 is where you get details of that story. And uh, I think uh, for the Imo stage, it's moved to March 2. I'm not sure of that of the Zamfara stage. You might want to uh, get a copy of the paper for details. There's uh, more interesting stuff on the back page as well that you might want to take a look at. Let's move on quickly now. Uh, time is never a friend on this program. Let's see how many um, screamers we can uh, take care of. Off. Out, uh, suspected headsmen killings, outrage as Delta CP admits receiving six assumed cupses. That's uh, for Vanguard a newspaper. It has a couple of uh, writers to that story. And then, let me, okay, that's it on the uh, front page. Um, we need to establish our own amotoku now. That's Pandev, <laughs> IYC, others speaking. Uh, uh, we need um, fish out killers, a core of families of slain victims lament killing. Um, uh, another one on the front page, just beside the a picture of uh, ESCC passing out parade. We have flight diversions, reps probe aviation agency, more enactment of passenger protection law. Um, there, were, there were talks about the, um, the fact that the fact that um, passengers who bear the inconveniences of flight diversion seems to also be the one to take care of their flight, their um, hotel booking and paying for additional costs and all of that. Uh, those are some of the things uh, uh, captured here. But I'll just leave this time, leave it open for you gentlemen to pick on which of this headline catches your interest most this morning? The, the, the outrage at Delta CP admit because the, the headsmen were said to have killed about eight people, I think. Uh, maybe, maybe they're now six. Uh, whatever the number is. Yeah, the, now, the, the, the headline here is suspected, suspected headsmen. headsmen. There doesn't and, seem and, to and be a confirmation. Important. Yeah. Whoever the killers are, when you want to stop or dissuade an act of criminality, one thing that is very important is that we must know who the criminals are and we must punish them. For as long as we don't do that, mm. there will be recurrences because you actually empower the people who are committing this crime to go away. So in the Delta case, it would be nice to see this to the very end. Not the way the screamer just comes and then the old story dies. Mm. When these people are arrested, it would be nice to see them when they are prosecuted and eventually punished. For the act, who, it is important who, who, to Whose responsibility will that be? Because you do know, okay, that's, that's one part of the responsibility. <laughs> yeah. There are other parts as well, because we do know that we seem to have very transient attention span Correct. in this country. And something like this will demand not just the press, but more. Uh, don't you think so? Yes. Um, the, the police said they've received, they are admitted receiving the uh, six exhumed corpses. I think they should go further in their investigations. And like he said, anyone found one thing or who have committed such crime should be punished. Because in Nigeria, we've refused to have good punitive measures. And that's why people feel they can do things and get away with it. And then, like he said, it, it will have reoccurrence. If I, th if I do it and nothing happens, somebody else will do it, thinking nothing will happen. And that's what's been happening to us. Okay, gentlemen, um, I was going to mention the, the way the Vanguard mentioned it here. Buhari won't sack seven chiefs, says SGA. But this day is putting it as the big headline here. Yeah. So I'm just going to focus on it and uh, tell you what this day is saying. Revealed, Buhari empowered to extend service chiefs tenure. Uh, we have um, HTACOS. Yeah. Uh, authorizes president to delay retirement irrespective of age. 
Buhari can't sack military top brass now, says SGF. Let's just tackle that before we look at uh, other headlines. Uh, uh, Dr. Femi, let's start with you. Yes, um, I read the article and it says there's a, there's a, there's a Nigerian army uh, commission, a commission and a agreement that was signed in 2017 that, which permits the president to... Uh, it gives him the right to keep the service chiefs even beyond age or years of service. So we were having this discussion before we came on here. It is now like, because Falano is going to court, and now it's now what does the constitution says? If the constitution is silent on this matter, that means the president or the federal government is going to ride on this. Uh, uh, do you believe that maybe the um, noise about the service chief being retired might be a distraction from uh, the work that they need to do? Or you support the school of thought that these men need to go take a break? Two, two comments on that. One is the fact that they have served. And there's nothing wrong if someone has served this nation. Shake him. Say, thank you for your service to this nation. Bye-bye and get another person in the position, especially in view of the various uh, pressure from several quarters on, about this issue that we need fresh blood. That is on one side. On the other side, there might be a genuine reason why the president is saying, no, um, we shouldn't do this now. Maybe they're in the midst of an, some, some operational issues that you don't want to pull them down. In the, it's like sacking a coach. Yeah. At certain times in, in, the, in, in the league, in a competition, it could derail the entire pursuit of that. But whatever the case is, if that is what is happening, we deserve to know what no, is going yeah. on. If we, the people, say this is where we're going, this is what we want, if the people who are leading us think that we should not go in that direction, they should tell us why we should not go in that direction. Well, if if they say, tell us, wouldn't that um, be counterproductive to the issue that they are trying to resolve? If you are alluding that there is a possibility that there is something strategic going on that we are not aware of. As I've said it just now, that is as blank as it comes. There's no information. I've not given any information. Yeah. Have yeah. I? Yeah. yeah. That's it. Okay, let's see um, <laughs> this one quickly before we move on. U.S. visa ban on Nigerians not permanent, says Ambassador yeah. uh, Dr. Fanny. Yes, it just um, is it's very unfortunate, but it shows that the U.S. government, they have direction where they're going. And in a long time, we don't. We don't have a strategic direction of where we're going. But now they're saying to us, they need data between Abuja and Washington. When they don't get that, it won't change. I guess that's what we'll pass things for today. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming. Thanks for having us. Oh, it was a pleasure. And thank you for watching. That's about the much we can do with the headlines this morning. We're hoping that you can go visit your vendor and read details of the story. And don't just run with the headlines. Thanks for watching. See you another time.